Hi, my name is Henry Segerman. These are the Platonic solids and the Archimedean solids. Well, so wait a minute, didn't we already do the Platonic solids? So, um, so this is a set of, of prints that I made. Um, I call these regular polyhedra. And with them, the, uh, the deal was that the distance from the origin to uh, the vertex of each polyhedron um, was the same, so that they were all sort of roughly the same size. In contrast, uh, with these ones, the, the point is that all of the edge lengths are the same. So, for example, you can see here's the uh, tetrahedron and the octahedron, and the equilateral triangles of the two of them are the same size, so you can see that they, they fit together. Um, and this is, uh, you know, so if you have enough of these, then you can put them together to, to make the um, tessellation of space with octahedron and tetrahedra. So, just to demonstrate that, here's, here's another regular tetrahedron. If you put it together, you can see that this is sort of a, a, a skewed cube, so you can just sort of stack these cubes together um, and they will fill space. So, okay, so we've got the tetrahedron, cube, octahedron, dodecahedron, and icosahedron. So what about all of these um, Archimedean solids? What are they about? So, um, so there are 13 of these. Um, so what's, what's the rule for are you an Archimedean solid? Um, it has to be a regular polygon, so each of your faces is a, is a regular polygon, and all of the vertices have to be the same. So in this case, uh, the faces are equilateral triangles and hexagons, and each vertex has uh, two hexagons and one triangle. And strictly speaking, um, so we require that there's a symmetry of the object um, that takes the object to itself, that takes any vertex to any other vertex. So there's, there's, uh, there's one extra um, solid which is which almost fits the uh, this definition um, it's it's called the elongated square gyro by cupola which is where you take this one um, and you sort of take this octagon here and you rotate it by one click and then every vertex has still will still have uh, three squares and one triangle but the vertices around this ring are going to be different from the vertices around this ring there's, in the sense that there's no symmetry that takes you from one to the other um, so, so that, that guy, the elongated square gyro by Capella, um, is one of the, the 92 Johnson solids, um, which are even less regular than these Archimedean solids. Um, so they're, they're convex uh, solids that have regular polygon faces, but are not the platonic solids or the Archimedean solids. Or, I guess, the, the other classes of polyhedra that are missing from this, this are the, the prisms or the antiprisms. Um, there's infinitely many of those, and so we sort of they're in their own class. So, so what are these, these different Archimedean solids? This is the, the truncated tetrahedron. So what is truncation? You start with uh, well, a tetrahedron in this case, and you chop off all of the, all of the, the corners um, down to a certain distance away from, from where you started. Um, so in this case, I can actually put a tetrahedron on top of here. This is, this is what, this was one corner of the tetrahedron before truncation. And I chop it off and I get this, this truncated guy. And you chop it down so that these, uh, the face that you see here is, is, is regular, in this case a regular hexagon. And this is the only one of the Archimedean solids that, that just has tetrahedral symmetry. Um, and then there's a whole class which have uh, cubic or octahedral symmetry. So this is the, the truncated cube. Again, you start with a cube and you chop the corners off down so that what you're left with on the faces that used to be squares, these are now octagons. Um, if you go from the other direction, you can start with an octahedron and uh, chop the corners off and you're going to get squares. And so you chop them down and you're going to get these, these square faces. Again, the triangles turn into hexagons. And then sort of in between these two, so there's a, there's a sequence here, is the uh, cube octahedron. So if you truncate even more, so if you start with uh, the octahedron, let's get this oriented the right way, and then you, you chop these, you chop off down further, uh, move these, these square planes uh, down even further so that they actually meet at the corners, then these squares are still squares and the hexagons have turned into triangles. And this guy is sort of halfway in truncation between the octahedron and the cube. And uh, so if you go from either direction, you, you meet in the middle with the, the cube octahedron. That's the truncated cube, the cube octahedron, and the truncated octahedron. And then there's uh, three more guys here. So there's the rhombocube octahedron. 
So the name of this um, is in reference to some of the square faces. So if you take, um, so if you imagine sort of putting this inside of a cube, and then there's 12 squares that correspond to the edges of the cube, and there are six others that correspond to the faces of the cube. And so if you take those 12 square faces and you sort of extend them outwards until they meet, then these will form rhombi. So um, here's this square here, so I take a little sort of uh, triangle coming out of a, a square pyramid seen on this face, another one down here, a little triangle here from this triangular pyramid out here, and they together make a rhombus, um, from, which is one of the 12 faces of the rhombic dodecahedron. It's the rhombic cube octahedron. And then this guy is the truncated cube octahedron. Um, so take this cube octahedron and chop off the vertices, um, sort of mush things a little bit uh, around a little bit, because if you just cut this off with a square plane, you're not going to get a square here, you're going to get a rectangle. Um, but if you do it right, then these, these vertices get chopped off and turn into squares, the triangles turn into hexagons, and the squares turn into octagons. That's the truncated cube octahedron. And then finally, there's the snub cube, um, which is what you take when you start with a cube. And there are these six square faces um, from the cube that you sort of pull them apart, give them a little bit of a twist, and fill in the rest with, with triangles. And then there's a very similar sequence of um, uh, polyhedra Archimedean solids uh, based on the dodecahedral or icosahedral symmetry. So this is a, a truncated icosahedron. So start with an icosahedron. If you cut off all of the, the vertices, you're going to get these uh, 12 pentagons. Um, and the triangles have become hexagons. Uh, if instead you start with a, a dodecahedron and cut off the, the, the vertices, then the pentagons turn into these decagons, and the vertices turn into these triangles. And then in between these two is um, the icosidodecahedron. Um, so again, if you truncate this even more, then these uh, triangles expand until they, they bump into each other, and the uh, decagons of the truncated dodecahedron uh, turn into pentagons again. And so again you have the sequence with the icosahedron, uh, then the truncated icosahedron, the icosadodecahedron, the truncated dodecahedron, and the dodecahedron. And once more there's, there's three others. There's um, the rhombic, rhombi icosahedron, rhombi icosadodecahedron, got there finally. Um, so again here we've got all of these the, there's 30 square faces, and this time if you extend these out uh, into, into rhombuses, then you make the rhombic triacontahedron. It's a 30-sided figure with rhombic faces. And this guy is, the biggest of the lot, is the truncated um, icosidodecahedron. So again, if you take these vertices and you truncate them down, you get squares, the triangles turn into hexagons, and the pentagons turn into decagons. And lastly is the snub um, dodecahedron. Again, uh, you start with the dodecahedron, you pull the faces apart a little bit, give them a little bit of a twist, and uh, you get to put in uh, these uh, triangles to fill in the gaps. And the, the snub cube and the snub dodecahedron are the only ones which are, which are chiral. Um, so in fact, there's two different ways to do this. Um, this is different from its mirror image. None of the other ones have, have that property. So these are the Archimedean solids and the Platonic solids. Thanks for watching.